Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to look at text overlay in Canvas. Specifically, how can you put text in front of a picture? And before we get started, I'll mention that in order to get this effect, you either have to have access to the theme editor in your Canvas instance, or you have to work with somebody who has access to the theme editor. It's just a few simple lines of code that you'll need. Here's some examples of text overlay on a Canvas page. Now I'm starting with some H2, some header 2, and I'm just putting some text over a picture. This first one is a regular picture that I got from unsplash.com. The second picture, I lightened the opacity, so I essentially made the picture a little bit more transparent so that the text would have good contrast. With the first one, contrast is difficult. Whether it's black text or white text, there's just too much in the background, and so it's hard for readers to even be able to read the content. Now another alternative is you can darken the image by bumping down the brightness, and that way you can put white text on the image, and that increases the readability as well. So that's three options. What I'm showing you here is all H2, but you can also put some paragraph text if you want, and you can maybe combine H2 with paragraph. You want to be mindful that you don't put too much paragraph on there, because what I'm looking for here, if I bump this down to a smaller resolution, maybe something that I would see on the phone screen, then I don't want too much text because the text would be bigger than the image. And so I want to make sure that I have a balance between the image size and the text. So let's go ahead and edit this page, and I'm actually going to delete everything. And we're going to start by showing the code that you're going to need to put into your theme editor in Canvas. The first line that you're going to need is this, and you can name this class whatever you want. I chose to name it overlay-content. And this is going to be for a div that you create, and the image and the text are both going to be within that div. So this is the first important line of code that you'll need. Now second, I want an option to be able to lighten up the image. And so again, you can name this class whatever you want. I named it overlay-lighten, and I set the opacity to 0.3. Now if the opacity is 1, then the picture is just regular. If the opacity is 0, that means it's completely transparent. And so I have it set at 0.3, which means it's essentially 70% transparent. And that really lightens up the picture so that I can put dark text on it and so that there's a good contrast for accessibility. Now you may want to darken up the image. In that case, I have a class here, overlay-darken, and I put a filter where I lower the brightness to 50%. Instead of being 100%, which is normal, I take away half of the brightness and I put it at 50%. So that's gonna darken up that image so that I can put white text on top of it, and that'll help the accessibility, the contrast, and the readability. And the last thing I'm going to want to put into my theme editor is this class here, and I named it overlay-text, and this is for the actual text box. And you're going to want that position to be absolute, and then you're going to want top 50%, meaning the text is going to come down 50%, and then left 50%, which means it'll come in from the right 50%. Now if I were to leave it at that, absolute top and left 50%, then the top left corner of the text box, now the text box is invisible, but the text will start from that center point. And so that's why it's important that I put this transform, and I'm going to translate it negative 50% and negative 50%. And so that's going to give me that centering effect. And so this is the code that you're going to want to put into your theme editor. And again, you can name these classes whatever you want, but then you just have to make sure that you note the class name so that you can use them. So in my instance, I have that uploaded into my theme editor. And now let's just go explore an image. Let's hop over here to Unsplash and look at the options that we have. Now, the first thing that catches my attention is there's this picture with a lot of contrast. I'm going to want to stay away from something like that. It's going to be really hard working with images that have very dark and very light elements to it because I want to put text in front of it. And so you can search for some of these, see if there's something that you want, or you can search for a category. So in my case, I don't know, let's look for wallpapers, see what kind of wallpapers we have. And this one here catches my attention. So I would either download that so I can upload it into Canvas or maybe copy the image address. And now I'll start writing in my code. The first thing I'll do is put this div with a class of overlay content. And again, that's centering it and that's putting the position to relative. And I'll go ahead and close out that div. And now I'm going to want to put the picture in first. So I'm going to put the picture with a width of 50%, meaning it'll just take up 50% of the screen. And since it's centered, that means there'll be 25% space on the left, 25% space on the right. But I don't want it to get too small, especially for mobile devices. And so I'm going to put a minimum width of 350 pixels. 
and then I'll just put the source. So you either upload the picture into Canvas, or in my case, I'm just putting the URL to the unsplashed image. So now I'm going to prepare for the text, and I'm going to put a div with the class of overlay-text, or whatever you named it. And I'm going to put the style also at 50% so it matches the image with a minimum width of 350 pixels. Before I add the text, I'm just going to go ahead and close out that div. And for this text, I'm going to put an H2, and I'm going to add some styling. I'll put some padding. I want 0 and 20 pixels meaning zero will be the top and the bottom. I don't want any padding on the top or the bottom, but I want 20 pixels from the left and the right. And that just ensures that if the text is wrapping, then it's not gonna go clear to the edge of the picture. It'll just have a little bit of room. So that's my first one. Let's go ahead and save this and see what it looks like. Now, obviously we have some work to do. The text is there, it's over the image, but I can't really read it that well. I can read some of the letters, but not all of the letters. So what are the options that we have there? First thing I can do is I can make this white. Let's see what that does. That helps a little bit. I can see some of the letters a little bit better, but there's just so much detail in the back that it's really hard to read. So let's add something to the picture. I'm going to put a class and let's first try the overlay lighten. And I'm going to take away this color for the H2 and we'll just keep that black. Since the image is light, we can keep the image dark. So that's quite a bit better. I can definitely read that, and I can still kind of see what the background image is. I can make out the mountains and the sky and the landscape. So I'm going to hang on to that, but let's go ahead and copy it. And let's look at the overlay darken that we created. Again, this is going to take the image and it's going to bump down the brightness to 50% from 100%. And that's going to make it pretty dark, and so I'm going to want to create some color with this H2. All right, so let's try that. We'll put the color as white and we're gonna darken up the image. And I'm just gonna add an extra paragraph at the bottom just to give us some room. All right, so now I have two images and I think that both of these work pretty well. You can definitely read this and you can read that one as well. Now, if it's important that you really have the detail of the background image, then I feel like this darkened one probably works a little bit better than the lightened one but for the readability, I feel like the light one works a little bit better. I just feel like I can read this text better than I can read the text at the bottom. Now the boilerplate that I have here, we're looking at H2, and so what I found is about nine or 10 words seems to be optimal, or about 100 characters with spaces. And that's about what I have here. And the reason why is if I uh, make this smaller, you can see it adjusting. So I have this set to 50% the width of the screen until it gets to 350 pixels and the image won't get any smaller than 350 pixels. And that's just my personal rule of thumb because I think 350 pixels looks okay on a mobile device. Anything larger and you're going to have to scroll left and right on the mobile device or it's going to run off the screen and they're going to miss some of the image. And if I kept it at 50% and didn't specify that I want the minimum to be 350 pixels, then this would continue being 50% and the image would be very small. And this way it seems to be a little bit more responsive. It grows with the page as the screen gets bigger, but it also looks good on mobile. Now, of course, if you had a large screen, I could fit more text onto this image and that would look just fine. But then if there's more text, it would look bad on a mobile device. And so that's why I'm limiting it to about 100 characters with the H2 header. However, if you were to use a paragraph, then you could probably fit some more in there. So let's look at some more options. First of all, I'm going to copy this space. I'm going to put some break in between there, and then I'll just copy and paste both of these. So now we have four image. And this H2 right here, I'm going to replace this with a paragraph. And so it's going to be much smaller. The font will be smaller, but that means I can put more font in there. We'll keep the padding. I want that 20 pixel padding to the left and right, but I'm just going to increase the amount of text that we have on there. And then for this guy down here, we're going to keep, let's just keep a couple of words for the header. And then I'm going to put a paragraph. And once I have that paragraph, I'm going to copy the style that I have from the H2 because I want the paragraph also to be white text and I want it to have that padding. And so let's take a look at that and see what we have saved. Okay, again, first we have the H2 with the lightened background and the dark font, and then we have the H2 with the light font over the dark background. And then we have some text. You can see that I can have a lot more text. What I found is that about 40 words is okay, or 330 characters with spaces, more or less. That seems to translate to smaller screens. 
and finally have a combination of a header and then some paragraphs. Now let's look at this on a smaller screen. You can see that this header paragraph combination, it looks a little bit cramped. It's starting to move off of the image. So that's probably too many words. The paragraph itself looks okay. I think that that's around 330 characters with spaces and that seems to work okay. As well as these two headers that each have about 100 characters with spaces, that looks okay. And so it's a matter of just tinkering around. I can go ahead and edit this and I'll edit it in the uh, rich content editor. And I'm just gonna take off these three last words. Banjo, blog, deep, I think that was probably a little bit too much. All right, looking down, it looks good. And on mobile, that seems to fit. That's pretty cramped, but I think that that's gonna be okay. Looks good on a small screen, and as I enlarge it, it continues to look okay. So again, you're not gonna want to use this effect with a very large image because that's not gonna look good on mobile and you're not gonna want a lot of text. This could be good for some sections or to break up your content just a little bit to put a quote or to emphasize a point, but you're really just not gonna want to have a lot of text on there. And I'll also note that the code that I provided you centers everything and it's always gonna be centered. So you're gonna have text on the top, on the bottom, and this will always be right in the center of the middle of the page. It's not gonna to be to the left or to the right, and you can't float it to the left or the right. As I created this interaction, I really wanted to balance between functionality and customization. I want this code to be simple to use and effective, but we really can't get too fancy. Another point that I want to make, if I hop back over to this edit page, is that when you use the dark image with the light text, on the rich content editor, it can be really hard to work with. The text is here, but since it's white, it's really hard to see. Now I could make it off-white, maybe a light gray, so that way I can still kind of see it, and so that can help you to work in the rich content editor, but I really suggest that you get comfortable with the HTML editor for this, and so that you can work with the text in the HTML editor, because I really think that this will be the most effective way to work with this interaction. Now if you wanna grab all the code that I'm working with, you can get that on our website, howtocanvas.com. Just look in the description below for a link to the blog post where I'm gonna have all of this code. You can copy it, you can paste it, you can modify it. Try and break it and then try and fix it. That's really how you grow. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click the icon for notifications. I have new content coming out every week on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And I try and publish more content on my nights and weekends if my projects permit me. You can also follow How to Canvas on social media to get notifications of new content out there. So have fun playing with this interaction. Leave a comment to let me know how it goes for you. And if you're finishing up the school year right now, then I wish you well. Everyone, happy teaching and learning.